Hey guys, this is Barrett with freesaloneducation.com. And right now I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna show you a everyday blow dry in the salon. We're gonna do a round brush blow dry on our model Taylor. Right now we're just gonna go through and power dry everything though, but you wanna make sure you're power drying in the direction that the hair is laying, just so that you don't blow the cuticle out. If you go in and start a round brush blow dry right away, right from the shampoo bowl, you're gonna be there for hours on end. And you wanna show that your clients too, that this is something they can go home and do themselves. And they don't have to, they can walk around the house, you know, let their, let their hair air dry a little bit if they want to, and then go in. So the first section, I'm gonna start in the front. I always like to section the back off from the front when we're going through because I am gonna do a set on this blow dry. You never wanna take a section that's bigger than the brush that you're using. I'm using a large round brush right now and it has one, it's one of the ones that has a metal barrel on it. And that's important because you're gonna, you wanna make sure it's nice and sleek and nice and smooth. Taylor does have really great hair, so she doesn't have a lot of damage to the hair, but if for someone who does have a little bit more damage, maybe somebody who's a little more blonde, you want to go in and you want to make sure that it's going to put some nice shine on the hair with the metal barrel. But making sure that the section that you take is never bigger than the brush that you're using, like I said before, because then you're not going to get all of the hair around the brush and you're going to have part of the hair a little bit curly, part of the hair feeling finished. and. You wanna make sure that every section is completely sleek and completely finished and curled for you. As we move up to the top of this blow dry, on the side sections, we are gonna pull a little bit more straight up from where the hair is living, just because that's where we're gonna maximize the volume in this blow dry. If you were to pull it more straight out, as you're gonna see a little bit later in the blow dry, we are gonna pull a little bit more straight out because you don't need a ton of volume in certain places. Sometimes you're gonna see me pulling a little over the part line to over direct it a little bit. And you can see right there, as I'm twirling it out of the brush, I just pinch it at the ends. And sometimes if you just pinch it at the end and then unravel, unravel it from the brush, it adds a little bit more curl and a little bit more texture to the end of the brush. Moving on to the heavy side of the hair, same things as we did on the other side that we started on. I'm gonna pull straight up, just slightly over directing it from where it's living. Making sure that it's really dry at the root and at the ends. You saw right there, I pulled it through a little bit more, rounded it a little bit more at the ends, because you wanna make sure all the shine is at the ends, the mid shift and the root. If you just focus on the root, then you're gonna have really beautiful hair at the root and a little bit frizzy at the ends. You wanna make sure it's completely polished and completely finished all the way through the sectioning. I have a lot of clients ask me all the time, well, it's still really, you know, it didn't feel finished. It didn't feel, you know, like it did when I left the salon with you. This is a, a blow dry that you can come in and have somebody get once a week. I have a lot of clients who come in and get this done once a week on their hair, but it's also something you can teach them to do on their own to make it feel like they walked out of the salon because everybody is gonna ask them then, well, where'd you, where do you get your hair done? Who taught you how to do that? And you really want them to say your name when you're there. Now, as we get to these thicker sections that are in the back, you still wanna make sure it's nice and neat when clipping the hair away that you're not letting a ton of wet hair just fall in front of their face because it still is a presentation, it's a blow dry. This is an experience for them. Having a ton of wet hair in their face is not really a great experience. You're gonna see me section it into two sides, a left and a right when the section gets thicker because it's not big enough. The brush is not as long as the section is. So you're gonna have two smaller sections as we get to the heavier side, more towards the fringe area of her hair. You're gonna see me pull a little bit further up and flip back and forth going on the top of the section and the underneath of the section. And that's something that I really like to do that's important because then you get it sleek underneath and you get it sleek on top as you unravel it and then taking both sections together, forming one gigantic curl and pinning it up in the pin curl clip. When doing a set, I'm right-handed, so I always like to pin everything on the right-hand side. If you're left-handed, pinning it on the left side, just keeping it nice and organized is something that really works well because then when you go to take them out, you always know, okay, they're on the right side or they're all on the left side, the pin curl clips. 
So you're gonna see that it just adds to their experience. They see that you're nice and organized, which is great. Same thing on this section, because it's the front section, Taylor likes to wear her hair a little bit more coming down over her forehead. So I'm gonna pull it and over direct it slightly over. You saw me go back and forth with it. Going back and forth and doing a little bit more movement, different directions is gonna let the hair flow. And when you're doing a round brush blow dry, especially with a larger round brush, you really want it to feel bouncy and you want it to, to have a lot of movement in the hair when you have long hair. Same thing right there, we got the root done. Now we wanna get the mid shaft done. And then we're gonna go through and do the ends, making sure that they're nice and smooth and curled. Letting it sit and then unraveling it. When I unravel it, like I said, I like to hold it sometimes. It just adds a little bit more texture to the hair, unraveling it. It doesn't always look like it right away, but that once you get your hands in and at the end, putting this working spray on it as it's setting is really gonna give it nice bounce to the hair. Now we're moving down to the nape of the neck and I'm going through and I'm blow drying just one side at a time because the nape of the neck is a little bit wider. When you have a guest in your chair, a client in your chair, if you can't get to the bottom of you know, right at the root, right at the nape of the neck, tilt their head forward. Don't be afraid to move their head because you really wanna make sure that's dry. You always have people who say, but you know, in a class when I'm teaching something, they say, but it's still dry underneath there. You wanna make sure if it's not dry underneath, it's the same thing as the foundation of a house. If it's not completely built and well-structured from the beginning, you know, everything that's holding it up, it's gonna fall down. Same thing with a blow dry, especially a round brush blow dry. If the root underneath is completely still wet, but everything else looks nice, it's not gonna last very long, and then that person's gonna walk out. And, you know, especially at this time of year, you wanna make sure that hair is completely dry. The foundation of the hair is super important when it comes to this blow dry. As we're moving up in the hair, we're still taking horizontal sections. Same width of the brush. But I'm going through and doing all of the sections and then pinning them up. You really wanna make sure that they're cooling in that curl so you don't wanna disturb the curl too much from when you unravel it from the hairbrush. I know I've had stylists ask me, well, look, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm round brushing and I'm taking too many sections and you know, I'm pulling it through the hair so many times, that's okay. You want to make sure that, like I said before, it's completely sleek on each side. Pull it in different directions. Go through that section as many times as you need to to set the curl in there. Once the hair is dry, then you know that the curl is set in there and you can set it up in a pin curl. This blow dryer you can also do without setting it in pin curl clips and doing a round brush set. This is something that just helps the curl last a little bit longer on the hair and live a bit, live a little bit longer through their day. Again, you can see at the root, I'm pulling up a little over direction right there to add a little bit more volume as we're getting to the top section of the hair. Because those, if they have longer layers, that's where they're living. So you wanna make sure that that has the most volume when it comes to this blow dry. Another little tip I always like to tell people as stylists, make sure that when you're angling the blow dryer that it's not angling straight down into the brush. Angle it towards you, you may get a little draft from the blow dryer, but that's really sealing down the cuticle, especially using a metal round brush. And you can use really any kind of round brush depending on that person's hair texture. But if you tilt it straight down, then you're straightening the hair. You're not round brushing it and, you know, setting that curl in there. You're setting it down so that you have a nice sleek straight hair, which I have women who come in wanting their hair round brushed just to make it smooth and straight. But this, for this kind of round brush to give the bouncy voluminous curls, you really wanna make sure that you're angling that. Now that the set's done, we're finishing it off just with the working spray like we did in the front sections, something very light that's not gonna make it crunchy. And you saw that, you know, you can wipe the little baby hairs, the little angel hairs in the front of their head. 
just with that hairspray. Going in and taking out the pin curls, you wanna go through and start with the first curl that you actually set up because that's had the longest time to curl and just let them come straight out. Don't really disturb them too much. We're just taking them out right now. Same thing at the bottom. The first one that we set in the bottom, you're gonna move to the top. Now spraying it with a little bit of a heavier spray, still not a crunchier spray, having her tilt her head back a little bit. Getting your hands in there, you wanna make it feel like you can actually touch the hair. And stepping in front, as a stylist, you'll use your mirror. Make sure that the front of their hair, where they have that part, goes through. If you still feel like you need to spray it a little bit, see those bouncy curls lifting up that volume. It's still set in there. And then going through with the shine spray just to really, really finish it. You shouldn't be afraid to touch that person's hair after you go through with the round brush that you're gonna disturb it. Now we're going in with a firmer spray to set in where we have all the curl. I'm just gonna arc her bang up just a little bit. Defining the curls and then pushing them straight forward. Seeing how shiny and bouncy the end of her hair is. That's why it's so important to finish from root to mid shaft to ends with this kind of round brushing. And there we have the finished product of our round brush from freesaloneducation.com.